Hey, this is Matthew here from miniwargaming.com and this is another episode in the series of how to make money with your hobby, where we're gonna focus on how you can make videos in order to actually make some money to subsidize your hobby. Now, before I go any further, I want to once again emphasize that this is not a how to get rich or how to even build a business, although you could apply a lot of these techniques if you're hoping to start your own business centered around wargaming or even centered around video making. In this episode, we're gonna focus on the types of videos that you can create, because this is probably the most important thing that you can decide on how you're going to grow your business. Now, when it comes to videos for the wargaming industry, or for any industry for that matter, to get the most success out of the least amount of work, or yeah, I guess that's the best way to put it, the most success or the most bang for your buck, or uh, the most success for the time that you put into it, you need to be picky on the types of videos that you make. Now, if you use Mini Wargaming as an example, or Beasts of War as an example, or Blue Table Painting, those are the three examples I always give. I know there's other ones out there, but I just like to give those as examples because um, before Beasts of War got their YouTube channel <laughs> canceled for whatever reason, which it's back now, um, the three of us, the Mini Wargaming, Beasts of War, and Blue Table Painting had the most subscribers for the wargaming industry, which isn't necessarily saying a lot because the wargaming industry on YouTube is rather small compared to other markets such as the video game industry. Anyways, when you look at the types of videos that we do, we all have one thing in common, and that is that we put out a lot of content. Now, out of the three, us as many wargaming, we probably put out the least amount of content, um, but still we put out more than the average hobbyist puts onto YouTube. Now, the thing that you'll notice is that we might break some of the rules that I'm actually gonna talk about in this video. And the reason for that is, um, the main rule that I wanna talk about is making each video something worthy of being spread around the internet. And obviously not every video that we create is worthy of that. And the reason we can get away with that is because we do so many videos that not, not every one of them has to be this awe-inspiring, awesome terrain project or the best painting tutorial or the best battle report in the world um, because we do a lot of them instead. But in your case, you want to not have to spend as much time as we do. Like for us, for example, um, Dave works full-time making videos or preparing for videos or whatever. And I work most of the time making videos as well, as well as running other aspects of the business. So that's a one and a half man operation full time um, in order to get the number of videos that you see us put out. Beasts of War has several employees. Uh, Blue Table Painting does as well. So you're not really gonna be able to match the quantity. And so instead you can really make up for it by a quality amount. A good example that I like to give for this is Les from Awesome Paint Job. Um, he doesn't put up very many videos on YouTube and yet he's got a very large number of subscribers and a very large amount of views um, because the videos he does put up are, without any pun intended, very awesome. Uh, they're very, he's a very good painter. And so if you are, you're gonna have to bring your talents forward at this point is what I'm about to say. So let's talk about the types of videos that you could be creating in the wargaming industry. So this is gonna be very specific to our industry. Um, the main types of categories that I like to group them in is battle reports, tutorials, and that can be painting tutorials or terrain tutorials, showcasing, and that is where it's not so much a tutorial as it is a, hey, let's take a look at this thing that I made or that I saw a friend make or whatever else, and maybe vlogs. And a vlog is where um, you're more sitting in front of the camera for a longer period of time talking about lots of different things and it's meant to be played in the background while people paint or do aspects of their hobby. So the vlogs are lower quality, higher amount, hardly any editing, um, and depending on your personality, they can work. So what type of video should you do? Well, let me tell you right now, all of these types are quite popular, but they're only popular if the content is good. So rather than worry about exactly what type you should do, think about where your strengths lie. If you are an exceptionally good painter, or heck, if you're even an average to above average painter, then painting tutorials could really be where you want to make some videos because there's tons of beginner painters out there. Don't let this industry, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't let this industry scare you into thinking, oh, unless I'm this golden demon level painter, I shouldn't be making painting tutorials because let's tell you something, I'll tell you something right now. Dave and I are not golden demon level painters. We're not 
high level terrain makers. Heck, we're not really high level anything in this industry. And yet we've got a lot of views on our videos. And the reason for that is more because of what I believe to be presentation and personality and the quality of the content as well. Although some people might disagree, but whatever. The proof is in the number of subscribers and views that we are getting on our videos. And so if you are an above average painter, if you can paint half decently, then painted tutorials might be something that you can do. And they don't have to be that hard or difficult to make either, but they do require a bit more fiddling around with your camera and maybe a, a slightly better camera. Terrain tutorials, you don't have to have a good camera at all because there's not, it's not about the detail. Like they're really small details. Look at me paint an eye on this miniature. You got to look this close terrain. You can be back. Like here's the, the thing that I'm building and I'll show you, uh, you know, here's this big an, an, an item on it that I want to show you. So terrain tutorials are great if you have a, not a very good camera, like just a point and shoot that you're going to be using to take videos. Um, then terrain could actually be something you do. That's if you're good at making terrain though, or, or, if you find somebody who's good at making terrain. So for example, if you have a local club or store where they have some really good looking tables and there's somebody there that likes to make terrain, you can make videos of them. A lot of people are in this, uh, most people are in this industry not to make money. They just want to be in videos. Like we get people who post videos on our site with um, no reason other than just wanting to post them. Like we, if you look at Paul and Joe and Tim back in the day, they were posting videos on their site. They were in videos, not to make any money, but because they loved being in it. So you can be more like the reporter. So this is something else that you can consider. If you're not high skilled in painting or terrain making, but you know somebody who is, you could be on more reporter level where you create the videos of them doing that work. And then you're able to post those and get lots of views. So that's one way that you can look at it. If you have a good personality, um, and I know that's a funny thing to say because don't we all think we have good personalities? But I mean, like if you feel very comfortable on camera and feel that you have a good presentation style, then battle reports can really be good for you. And battle reports can be super, super, super easy to make, or you can make them more complicated. So battle reports, another one where you don't need this fancy camera, but you do need to learn some techniques in order to make half decent battle reports. But let me tell you something. Battle reports is probably what most of you should be doing. Um, or battle reports are what most of you should be doing. I, I know it's good grammars. And the reason I say that is because people love them and they can't get enough of them. And they like all sorts of them. Like for example, if you followed mini wargaming at all, you've noticed that we've kind of evolved our battle reports that we used to do what I call recap only battle reports where basically at the end of each turn, we turn on the camera and we talk and we just into the camera and say, here's what happened. And we look down at what was going on. And we say, this guy moved there and he shot at him and he blew up that tank and et cetera, et cetera, camera off. And then you play the next round, camera on. Those battle reports are so easy to make. It takes 15 minutes to edit them once you finish. If you're inexperienced, it'll probably take you half an hour. And then once you get used to them, it'll take you 15 minutes to edit them. That's because you just got these big long chunks of clips. So you just go, boom, turn one, little caption, turn two, boom, uh, there's the next video, caption for turn three, boom, and then you throw a bit of music on the bottom from incompetech.com because it's royalty free and you're allowed to use it without any compensation to them. You just have to attribute them. Anyway, and so those are super easy to make and believe it or not, people really, really like them, but you will get complaints. You'll get people saying, oh, I wish that you did more in depth so I could see what's going on. And so that's what drew me to make what I call my beat mat bat rep style or the, the, the voiceover style. And that's where I actually have a couple videos, um, on mini wargaming.com and how to make a bat rep beat mat bat rep style. And um, it's more complicated. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours of editing and it adds probably about half an hour to your actual game because it slows you down with all the videotaping that you're doing. And you need a half decent camera for it because you're going to be getting closer in. But um, people love it. But I still get comments saying, oh, this is too long. I wish you just, you know, went through it really fast. And so on my fast battle reports, we get comments saying, oh, I wish they were longer. And on the long battle reports, we get, oh, I wish these were shorter. And then we have another style battle report that um, you are good for like really small battles like Kill Team, where the game's only like 30 minutes. Um, Dave and Joe have been doing a few of these on the mini wargaming vault where they just pick up the camera and they turn it on and they play the full game. 
and they don't turn off the camera, and then they don't edit it at the end. And we get comments on those videos saying, I love this style because you get all the banter and all the what's going on. And then other people say, oh, I prefer it edited. So you get all these different types of battle reports, and there's different types of people that like them. And heck, you could even mix it up and do some of each. Um, the one that's unedited, though, really depends on personality. Joe is a funny personality, so just getting him on camera is entertaining. And so is Dave. So Dave and Joe on camera, that's entertaining. So if you have that kind of personality where you get on camera and people are entertained, then you can get away with just picking up your flip video. Remember, you're just going to pick up one of these. Saying, okay, let's play a game. And then going, all right, what are you doing now? Oh, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? What are you doing now? And just moving through it like that. That's really all you have to do. And so battle reports are definitely something that um, are, are easy to make and people really like them. So you could focus it around that. Um, and like I said, there's currently a couple of videos on Mini Wargaming at the time of that I made this video on how to make my beat map bat rep style where you do the voiceover and editing. Uh, it takes more time, but people, it seems to, to be very popular. So tutorials for painting or terrain based on your skill or battle reports if you figure you have more of a personality for it. Um, if you feel that you don't really have a personality for any of this, then you're going to have a harder time with videos in the beginning. Like if you feel awkward on camera, then making videos might not be the best option for you. So maybe it's something that you shouldn't really pursue. So those are the types of videos. Remember, remember it is the quality of the content that is more important than the quality of the production. What I mean by that is some people have been asking, well, how do I make these shiny intros and awesome overlays? Look at this video that I'm making right now, okay? Look at this video. I set up the camera on a tripod, I point it at me, and now I'm talking. Why is it a half-decent video then? I'm not going to say it's an awesome video because that would be a little presumptuous. So why is it a half-decent video? Well, it's because what I'm telling you is important and is interesting. It's the content of the video. When you look at the Blue Table Painting videos versus the Beasts of War videos, they're like opposite ends of the spectrum. Beasts of War is all polish and shine, and Blue Table Painting is not. And yet, he's got tons of subscribers and views. Why is that? Well, there's a bit of his personality, and also because he's showing you cool-looking miniatures. And we're in this hobby, and we love looking at cool-looking miniatures. So he's basically going around saying, hey, look at all these cool-looking miniatures, over and over again. And so he's able to do that and get lots of views because of it. Because people like to look at it for inspiration, uh, for ideas for color schemes, and they get Sean's quirky personality in there to boot. So that adds a nice package of a very good video without hardly any production value put into it. Maybe a little bit of an intro, maybe some pictures thrown into it, but that's about it. That's really just about it. So you don't need the high production value. In fact, hold back on the production and just focus on the fun stuff, the content. Because that way it'll take you less time, so you're not wasting your time making videos. This shouldn't become this all-consuming thing. This should be fun. This should be something that you want to do. So that answers the question of what types of videos you should create. However, I realize that there might be more questions, so I want to have a bit of a FAQ. In other words, post questions in the comments below, and I will be making other videos where all I do is answer your questions. We might even do some live shows as well where you can come on live and ask me questions. But for the most part, if you want a question answered, post it in the comment below, and I will create other videos to answer them. Stay tuned for more of how to make money from your hobby. Happy Wargaming. Visit miniwargaming.com to see our videos one month early.